I jumped up as I heard a sudden noise. I felt dizzy and my vision was blurred. I realized that the noise I heard was the fire alarm going off. I left my office and hurried into the hallway. I tried to figure out where the fire had started. I fought for a moment and instinctively headed for the home ec room. I prayed that nothing bad had happened. Oh yeah, there was an incident like that as well, wasn't there? I haven't seen Mrs. Koshi's in a long time. So it's kind of weird, really, you know, she said. Uh, she's referring to her as principal. But, like, the difference in appearance, man. Looks can be deceiving and all that. I almost tackled Mika-chan. She... That's... I mean, it's just, like, from Sakura's perspective, everything feels so different, isn't it? Especially, like, the way she refers to people by name. As I ran up the stairs. Her panic didn't give me hope. <laughs> Hearing that news made me feel relieved. Mega Chen's explanation didn't reassure me. An accident had happened in the school. It happened even though I was here. I was trying my best to hide my anxiety, but it seems my expression betrayed me. Man, it feels so weird. I mean, usually she makes goofy faces when interacting with Yoshiyuki or any other character, but with Sakura, it's a bit more straightforward, just like, more just like respectful towards her, you know? I didn't know if I was able to fool her, but Mega Chan went back to the office. After assessing the situation myself, I headed back to the principal's office. Well, your office, I suppose. I couldn't help but suspect that this accident was also caused by the everlasting cherry tree. I couldn't even prevent an accident from occurring in the school. This was just a small one, but it was only a matter of time before someone got seriously hurt. I was reaching my limits. I had to end this. I needed to end this. I repeated the options in my head for the upteenth time. If the eternal cherry blossom tree died, the accident would stop. But then, all the wishes it had granted would disappear. Even the well-meaning wishes by the people on Hatsune Island. Even my own wish. I felt a chill up my spine as I thought about it. My wish had been granted over ten years ago. But if the eternal cherry blossom tree died, Yoshiki Kun would vanish. For Yoshiki Kun's sake, I had to keep the tree alive. No, that wasn't it. The truth is, it was for my sake. I was the one who didn't want to be separated from him. Because he was my wish. That's why I could never go through it. If I was really go doing this for his sake, there would be one option left. One way to stop the everlasting cherry tree from destroying the island. I had to take complete control of it. Until now I had been attuned to the cherry blossom tree circuit, filling in the coding gaps as they came up. The system was broken and I was just reactivating. 
a fixing the flaws it created one by one. So is it like some giant supercomputer or something? But because the system itself remained broken, the same problems would come up time and again. Eventually, those flaws had built, built up on top of each other, causing new, more serious malfunctions. A vicious cycle. But eventually, it would become more than I could handle. In fact, it already has. I would have to take control. If I became the system, there would be no more malfunctions. Wait a minute. I could cut off the problem at the source. I should be capable of it. The only problem would be that I would have to keep constant control of it. I would effectively be sacrificing my life, and I would never be able to return. Yoshiro Kun appeared in my mind's eye. I can't come back. I'll never see him again. My mind was blank, that's all I could think about. I knew that things were getting serious, but I still couldn't do what had to be done. I take it that's how Upne ends up having to take matters into her own hands, I suppose. I leaned against the everlasting chair tree and stared vacantly at the pedals in the wind. I guess you could say I had come to an impasse. The first trace of indigo were beginning to stain the sunset sky. Someone was breathlessly running toward me. Her long hair swayed in a trail behind her, and a large ribbon. Sakura-san! It was up Nei-chan. Her voice pierced the still winter air. Ano? I stayed quiet, waiting for what Otme Chan was going to say next. I thought I knew what was go what she was going to try and ask me. She had realized that the accidents were related to the everlasting cherry tree. If anyone was going to figure it out, I knew it would be Otme Chan. Fifty years. So I imagine that was around about the time of the original. So add that on, and yeah, she would be like pretty old. She spoke rapidly between deep breaths, and yet her expression was like a girl preparing to be scolded. She was trying so hard to be tough. それは一度枯れてしまった。それから枯れない桜が再び咲くようになったのは10年ほど前。桜さんがアメリカからアツネ島に戻ってきた後。桜さん。その頃一体何があったか知りませんか? She had already guessed everything. She had realized that I was connected to the everlasting cherry tree. I was the one who needed to take the blame. But Otme Chan looked like she was getting ready to cry. Without saying anything, I nodded to her. Otme Chan fixed her mouth into a line and continued. I couldn't hide the truth from her any longer. It would be too cruel. Hesitantly, I began to speak. She was surprised by the revelation. I was hesitant to tell her the truth, but I forced myself to continue. Otomechan 
底というより今まで起きたことは全部この木の悪影響が原因なんだ悪影響うんこの木が不完全だったから今まではシステムの欠陥を補いながらそれでうまくやってきたんだけどでも僕の力じゃだんだん制御できなくなってきてそれでこんなことになんとかならないんですか昔と同じように桜を枯らせばもう事件は起きなくなるだったらそうしてくださいああ、そしてんのでコンセクエンスをべちゃしやたいすぽうこんなに危険な事件がいくつも起きているんです今日だって肛門のところで交通事故があったんですよさくらさん最初から知っていたのならどうしてどうして何もしないんですか I knew she was right, so I'd been witness to too many of the actions myself. It would be no good to make excuses. <laughs> It was a natural question, but I didn't know how to answer. Yeah, that is a pretty heart shattering answer that she'd have to give all away, isn't it? I didn't expect her to forgive me. I knew that I had been wrong to even start this. It was only my selfishness that had led me into it. I looked at my chance grand eyes. The wind gusted between us. It carried the petals up on a draft. I felt my hesitation fading, riding those petals to the lonely sky. She repeated her question in order to understand the consequences. I nodded quietly. She covered her mouth in shock. It was clear that she was lost for words. I saw the pain in her face. But to make Chan look like she was going to break down and cry. How was she supposed to decide between the island's residence and Yoshiki kun? They had grown up as siblings. He was like a brother to her. Maybe even something more. I placed my arms around Otome chan, acting mildly despite my smaller stature. She silently tucked her head into my bosom. A moan escaped her lips. That's how much she cared about Yoshiki kun. It wasn't just her. Yume chan felt the same way too. He also had so many friends. But that option is. <laughs> She didn't seem to believe me, she wouldn't even raise her head. I repeated myself, forcing cheer into my voice. <laughs> I stroked up Nei Chan's hair as if I were comforting a little girl. Her hair was long and beautiful. 
I was so grateful for her compassion. Thank you, Wat Major. I repeated myself over and over for her. At last, I could do what needed to be done. Yoshiki-kun was still in the living room when I came home. I wasn't really that surprised when I saw the light slipping through the cracks around the door. I knew he would still be awake. It was a relief just to hear his voice. I wanted to tell him the truth that I ate out on my way home, but I changed my mind and lied. The truth was I wasn't hungry at all, but I wanted to be close to him. I just wanted to stay with him for a little while longer. My dinner was laid out on the table before I noticed. Boiled spinach and vegetables, grilled fish, white rice and miso soup. As much as I like western food, there was something about Japanese food that I found comforting when I wasn't doing well. I guess I was still Japanese to the core. I took a bite of the fish. I smiled at Yoshiki-kun with appreciation. He was so considerate of others. In that way, too, he reminded me of him. Him, I imagine, is Junichi. Which is kind of, uh... That's probably how Yoshiki is, is the way he is. Because, well, it seems that... He was essentially her wish, and she obviously must have had a thing for Junichi-san back in the original. So, he became simpler to him when he was brought into the world, I imagine. Even if they showed it in completely different ways. I was enjoying myself in the moment. But then suddenly I lost the will to eat. I couldn't just force myself. I left about half of my rice behind. Shigikun seemed surprised by the suddenness of my question. When I finally asked, his eyes only widened further. Could it be? I was wondering because of what happened with Upnei-chan this evening. I asked him in a teasing voice and he immediately replied that he did. Or perhaps... I continued to ask him about the different girls he was close to, just like, Come on, Yashiki, who's the canon girl that you end up with in the end? He's like, oh, none of them, actually. He's like, oh, well, that's anticlimactic. 
Just like, oh, well, how about Wataru then? Do you like him? Suganami? <laughs> he seemed happy. I guess this is how it feels when your child grows up and reaches independence. I didn't do anything that a parent should do. But I was sure that he'd be okay without me. It was a little sad to realize that. That's an odd thing to say, really. She's envious of how popular he is with the ladies, just like, be like, So, Sakura, do you want to have lots of girls attracted to you or something? Just like, no, it'd be the reverse, wouldn't it? I laughed out loud, trying to dispel the heavy atmosphere. But we might leave it ambiguous. I said under my breath with conflicted feelings. I continued to talk. I wanted to this Yeah, disguise it as a tease. But at the same time, I would tell him the truth. I felt sadder as I continued speaking to him. I got close to Yoshiki-kun and patted him on his head. So it's not just a protagonist thing then. He really had grown so much. I felt like I was going to cry just by looking at his face. I thrust my hands up towards his neck and hugged him as tight as I could. I charged the battery of my soul to give me strength. I could feel his temperature. I could hear his heartbeat too. But Mei-chan would be jealous if she saw me doing this to him. I said farewell to him in my heart. Goodbye, Yoshiki. You know, it could have had a CG, you know, but uh, he'll do. The next moment, I started crying. I couldn't hold the tears back anymore. I whispered my apology. I'm going to protect you. I can't see you anymore, but you'll still be here, living your life. That's good enough for me. I let go of him and wept my tears as I backed away. Then I gave him the biggest smile I could muster. I could do it now. He had given me the power to do anything. Oops. I cut him off before he could ask any more questions and left the room. My mind was made up. So that's when she went off to do that. But the question is, what did she do? How did she do it? And what happened afterwards?